welcome to the Literaries Podcast. I'm Maren McPhail. And I'm Morgan Maddich. And this is our last episode of 2023. My lord. What the I can't heck? believe it. What the heck? That's I can't all believe I can it. Say. It's wild to me. Wild. And we've been doing this for 35 episodes. Yeah, this is our 35th. Wow. Insane to me. Wow. What a and what a ride. I've been looking forward to this one for months. Since we yeah. decided to do this, I really like had have. like I've had things earmarked where I'm like, I need to talk about this and I've yeah. been waiting and now I'm so excited that we get to do it. But well, for our last episode of 2023, we're bringing you our favorite reads of the year. Some of these came out this year. Some of them have been out for several years, but it's just like what we happen to read, what we mm-hmm. fell in love with. And we just want to mm-hmm. share these titles with you and what makes them so good. We hope that it will give you kind of a good recommendation list if you're looking for books to start reading in 2024. Mm-hmm. And Morgan's, she's got, we both are hyped, but like there's one in particular yeah. that I know you're dying to talk about. Dying. I have a short but potent list. I did not read yes. a lot this year. This year was hard for me for reading. I just don't, sometimes I just don't have the motivation to. Yeah. I'm just like, I've like put all my eggs in the writing basket this year and like really like mm-hmm. been like focused on that that like I haven't read a lot I've read my book like four times this year <laughs> so, that was like, your that counts, reading that yeah. counts for my goodreads skull okay there you go that counts but it counts I didn't read like a lot of and what I did read it wasn't like substantial like a lot of them were just like mm-hmm. you know cheesy romances or like something. Romances, yeah, yeah something easy and fun Escapist. for the brain not yeah, yeah not yeah. heavy but the ones I did read that were heavy were great um yeah. which leads me I'm gonna I'm not gonna start with the best because okay there's 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 a ranking on this list. They're all fabulous and they're all above five star reads. They're great. Yeah, but... these are, mine are in no particular order. They're mm-hmm. all I'm just gonna, yeah, yeah, just w- whatever. But just I'm gonna whatever. start with with a fun light one since we're talking about that. Um, I have fallen in love with this author. She's the best. Her name is Suzanne Enoch, and she writes Regency romance, but like such smart Regency romance that mm-hmm. it's like crazy insane to me how. It just – it feels like it's, like, a highbrow historical book, but it's just so fun and fluffy. She's yeah. very good at researching. She's very good at making her characters and plots very believable, even, like, when they're, like, kind of zany and fun and, like, mm-hmm. rom-com. Like, she she grounds it so well, and she's so talented at doing that. And so Every Duke Has His Day is my – one of my favorites of this year. It is about a dog napper who uh, – accidentally kidnaps the wrong dog because he's trying to um get rid of his uh i guess his uh the object of his affections her dog is very feral and he wants the dog <laughs> gone but he accidentally kidnaps the wrong dog and he kidnaps the dog of a duke who is babysitting for his aunt so <laughs> they have to go on this adventure together to find their dog and you know fix the problem and they might just fall in love while doing it but Sounds it is so cute it is so cute. She uh, had my favorite of last year, too, Something in the Air, which is about this married couple who has to pretend to have these two heir children, and they go mm-hmm. and adopt these orphans, and okay. the hijinks ensue as they uh-huh. teach them how to be proper, proper little a lady, lady and a gentleman, but she's just so smart. Like, I feel like I'm reading, like, a, a well-researched historical, and I don't mm-hmm. get that a lot Even with, with the, romance. like, cutesy dog. Yes. Um, it's question, like, though, like, are there... Because asking for a friend, or mm-hmm. is, are there golden retrievers in this book? They are poodles. Okay, which I like because I have they don't a golden have any, noodle. So there aren't any other like dog friends that are no. golden. No, okay. no, no, no. That's in cute. Fact, it fits the vibes, like the the posh Barbie yeah. poodle. Yeah, they and they're like the, England. like groomed poodle with like the yes. little ball uh-huh. on the tail. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's so cute. Yeah, it's just it's so it's so witty. the The banter between them is amazing. She just always she always knocks it out of the park. If you want like a nice, not only like a nice, fun, swoony Regency romance, but also like a good historical that is well researched and to, she took care with it. She made it into yeah. not just like, oh, I'll write a Regency and like it's it's a genre that you can stretch the truth and whatever and it doesn't have to be completely historical. It can focus on the romance. She focuses on everything. She makes sure everything is t- fine tuned to be you know, just great. And so it hits every nail on the head for me. It's both, you know, fun and I get like a lighthearted love story and, you know, all the hijinks that ensue with finding a dog napper and like 
you know, and I you get plot and you get like really intricate, like fun espionage things. It's like you get it, there's something for everyone in this book. And I feel like even like as an introductory romance to historical romance, if you're not a historical reader, I don't know why you're watching us since we mainly talk about historical books. But <laughs> it's it's just great. So like it it was a good it was a good I read it at a good time in the year where it was like I just needed a fun light book and it came and it was like oh this is this is exactly what I need it's a feel good story so like if you're if you're in the mood for for something a bit lighter but still you know good I would definitely pick up every Duke has his day not only for the title I mean her titles are great so cute I love a pun and the title it's and so perfect it's it's perfect so that's my first one. Man. Well, my first, again, these are in no particular order, but we had to mention it. I was obsessed was House of Roots Ruin by Erin A. Craig. Mm-hmm. If you haven't listened to our episode where we interview her, go do that. It's episode 13. Mm-hmm. I was like in a bad reading slump when mm-hmm. I picked this up and Erin is like, for both of, both of us, it's like automatic buy. Yeah. Um, the detail in this world, the spooky vibes, getting mm-hmm. to revisit some of the characters from the previous book, House of Soul mm-hmm. and Sorrows. I just ate it up. It was like, yeah. it was what I needed. The familial relationships, the dynamics there, the toxicity there, like mm-hmm. just everything was so brilliantly done. Mm-hmm. I loved the world back, building, the world building and stepping, getting to see more of this world that was sort of established in the first book. Is just perfect, and the ending uh, uh, leaves the you second twist. guessing. Plot twist, and I just I recommend her books to everyone, but like this, I had to mm-hmm. include on on my list yeah. because it really was like mm, it hit the spot. Yeah, it's definitely when I would set it down, I would still be thinking about that. World. Yes, same. like I'd be just like, oh, I, I wonder what they're doing because it's like so magnificent and grand. You want to live there, like beautiful. even down you want to just... the cu- type of um. The colors of the candlesticks, like she, yeah. the scents, Nailed like it. everything. Th- this was one of those books that, like, inspires me as a writer. Like, it yes. makes me want to write, and it makes me want to improve my craft. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, those and those, like, they can be like part of your craft, or they can be like not part. You know what I'm saying? Like, they yeah. can be like they can be any genre, but this one like hits the genres we like. It hit like yeah on the historical stuff where it's like these allusions to like real world like fashions and you mm-hmm. know places, but it also hits like the horror and the fantasy and it, every every genre she shoved in there. The thriller aspect, everything was so so great, and it worked so well in tandem together. Where it's like you just can't put it down. It's you just, can't. It's such a it's it's a long book like it's it takes up a lot of room on my shelf but yeah. it, like you fly through it it doesn't feel like a long book when you're reading it no it's, she always she always she delivers delivers on every every everything she promises in the blurb you yeah. just know it's gonna be that it's gonna be good more yeah very good right, my you your next one my next one I teased this in a former episode I don't remember which one but um, somewhere in there <laughs> this starts this starts a pattern for me for this year of retelling <laughs> ideas I had and uh, someone else got to it first. And I have the I have the note in my phone that says Briseis retelling. And I saw this in Barnes & Noble and I was like, well, <laughs> I lost Bye. that one. That, that's getting crossed off the list. And I was like, I almost started hate reading it because I was like, I was kind of mad. But I was like, mm-hmm. I didn't get this first. Come on. And like, I picked it up and it was absolutely fabulous. And I realized that I could have never done it and I could have never put the nuance and put the the just historical just the mire of the Iliad politics into a book as well as Pat Barker did in The Silence of the Girls and The Woman of Troy. I have like I have reread it multiple times just because I'm like obsessed with it. Like it's just it's dark and it's horrible to reread, but at the same time it's like <laughs> just just the intricacies of what she managed to put in here and she really managed to make it this like feminist like telling of a story that is not about women at all in the traditional canon Mm -hmm. and really make it into something that they can carve out their own space and they can be characters in their own right and it's just it's it's wonderful it's it's dark when if you go into it do not expect a light fun book it is it is uh there's a lot of trigger warnings i would Mm -hmm. very much 
get up to date on what it is before you get into it. But Mm -hmm. just the writing style and the way she goes about handling a lot of these themes and a lot of the character relationships and these very, you know, difficult subjects is very nuanced and with such a gentle hand that it just it really holds up these these women that you learn about in English class as just like a, a name and a quick, you know, this person affected the entire plot. They have nothing else to do and you don't know anything about them. She managed to flesh out these people that like are very integral to the original story. And mm-hmm. it's just it's just a, a sight to behold. And I know I would have failed if I tried. So I'm so glad she got to do it before me. And like what started out as kind of a hate read turned into this this duology that I very much hold up as a, a great a great retelling and a, just a great you know historical historical tale that you know should have been told a long time ago well in the same vein so one of my other favorite books of the year was also um a historical piece mm-hmm. it is the traitor's wife by allison pataki i Came love that in. woman i love she's her so amazing much. she's picking like amazing women to write about but this book came out in 2014 and it follows uh, basically the whole story of uh, Peggy Ship and Arnold, who married mm-hmm. Benedict Arnold. Um, this is all taking place during the Revolutionary War. Um, as you all probably know, Benedict Arnold delivered West Point to the British and betrayed the American army. And it's basically their whole saga told through the eyes of Peggy's maid named Clara. Mm-hmm. And one, the drama, the the just... Girl boss queen. Girl boss queen, the intrigue, getting to watch <laughs> this really. Uh, Peggy's an interesting character, especially for the time period. Like, mm-hmm. she's very much aware of how to use her womanhood to her advantage. Mm-hmm. And seeing this all go down through the eyes of her maid and kind of the upstairs, downstairs element throughout mm-hmm. this book, amazing. And as a big American Revolution nerd and like having worked at Colonial Williamsburg, like, the details in this book really held up for me down to what they were wearing down to the details and the architecture of the houses that they lived in. Everything was so well done. I -hmm. love these characters so well researched. I can't recommend it enough. Like this kind of book is one that I felt like was made with me in mind. Like that's how much (laughs) I connected with the content and the vibes Mm -hmm. and just every aspect of it. So If you're looking for a good read set during the American Revolution that's got the details down pat, that's going to teach you something, I I can't recommend it enough. And the girl boss queen. The girl boss queen. Peggy Shippen Arnold is a very, you know, she's an interesting character. (laughs) She's very very layered. Like, Mm -hmm. there's moments where she's obviously portrayed as a villain, but there's there's nuance there, especially when you Mm -hmm. look at the relationship between her and her maid. That just complicates it more because th- there is a friendship there and there's a bond there, but there's also mm-hmm. the knowledge that they're both wanting different things out of life and have different values and, and ways the, of getting the that. employee employer dynamic of mm-hmm. like one will always have Overseed. power over the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's such. Alison Pataki is doing things for the historical genre that are fabulous oh, yeah. and wonderful, and we love her for it. We love it. What a what a a great career she's had, and she's picked very important historical woman to portray and she's got a very book, much respect she's got a book coming out in march of 2024 so hmm. um, i can't wait to to get my hands on that and for us to, to to delve into that world too yes yeah well in that vein i'm moving on to probably i would say my favorite book of all time. this is this is what i've been hearing about from morgan for this uh. year <laughs> Like it's it's another I've mentioned um, Sandra Gullen's Josephine series as like a book I can barely talk about because it is so important to me and this is mm-hmm. this falls into that category as well and I actually found it in a very unconventional way very similar to the Woman of Troy where it I was um, walking through the Titanic Museum in Gatlinburg Tennessee uh, on a family vacation and I saw the the portrait of um, J J Astor and Madeline Astor in like the car like it's a very famous picture there's very few photographs of them but it's if you looked it up you would see it but I saw them and I like I read the play and I was like oh I I remember her from my Titanic obsession when I was Mm -hmm. you know everyone had one everyone had a Titanic obsession but um I was like I want to do a book of like that sounds like it would be a very compelling book Mm -hmm. you know this this 
new wife and this, you know, pregnant mother on the Titanic and losing her husband. Like that would be a very compelling book. I went to the Wikipedia page first just to survey. And of course it has the other media tab and it said, you know, the second Mrs. Astor by Shauna Bay. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. It might be Abe, but I'm not sure. There's there's an accent mark. So I'm I'm assuming a Bay, a but bay. I might yeah. be I might be wrong. But I clicked on it and I was like, oh, someone beat me to it again. <laughs> this is the <laughs> second time this year. Oh, um, man. But I was like, I'm just going to read it and I, I I want this story either if whether I write it or not. When I tell you, <laughs> it is some of the best historical fiction I've ever seen. And I think she should be considered one of the next great historical fiction authors. My Lord. I mean, if you want to talk about detail, she just nailed everything. She she like combed through New York Times articles to get like, mm. you know, like I love family that. details and so, like just just her research process must have been insane because of you know, the, just the, the amount of that goes into not only the Edwardian time period, but like the Titanic is just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to deal with. But, you know, the the book starts out as, you know, this love story. And it's this beautiful, like, just human love story between two people who, you know, a, a very public figure and having to deal with not only like their own like sh- crap and everything that comes along with being them, but also a, a very rabid press and the beginnings of, you know, a newspaper society in America that wants to know everything about everyone and a tabloid society that is just making up rumors. And if you don't know the Astor family, my God, <laughs> please just just look up the name and you will see so, one Google so many search. people. One Google search. They are one of the most famous American families dating back to, you know, America. <laughs> so um, it's just this this story about like these two people overcoming so much and being able to like love each other despite just everyone trying to tear them apart the press the just every everyone trying to you know cast doubt and and suspicion on this relationship and then you know they they go and they find a a vacation to affirm you know their love and get away from the american you know rabid society and of course that's where they would faithfully get on the titanic and you know what's coming you know what's coming and that's what's mm-hmm. so heartbreaking about it is you is you witness this couple who is so strong and so loving and so supportive and it's unlike a lot of a lot of couples I've read about it is so grounded and just so earnest and then they get on the ship and you know what's going to happen and you know you know the outcome of this one way or the other and you're just like you're begging for it to stop and you almost want to put down the book Mm -hmm. and in that you keep reading and it just gets better and it just gets more profound and heartbreaking and in that you know horrible sadness and just grief and the the amount of just mournful everything she managed to capture in this book that's its greatest strength is that it manages to bottle up that you know whirlwind feeling you got reading the beginning of the book and twist it in such a way where it's like you feel like you're going through it alongside Madeline Mm -hmm. and it's it's such a it's such an interesting perspective on a real historical person that went through this and had to deal with the most horrible thing imaginable. It's just it's it's masterfully done. And there there are so many scenes where I'm just like sobbing and I'm just like this. I'm having the time of my life reading this. This is so I'm I'm having fun getting my heart broken because it's so it just not only the the book itself, but the writing style, everything about it is so. It's just a masterclass in historical fiction and especially on portraying a historical figure and multiple historical figures and making sure they are three dimensional and fleshed out and characterized in a way that, you know, makes their makes their model, you know, look look the way they are in history. Like a lot of people, I feel like dropped the ball on that. But Shauna just nailed nailed it. She nailed it. It's, It's such a great piece of American history the the Titanic will always be so iconic to the point where billionaires are trying to go on a submarine mission to I can't oh, believe Lord. that happened this year. I can't believe that oh, was no. part of 2023. But, you know, this this ship is forever idolized as like a place where so many dreams just died. It's like so many so many, you know, people were affected whether they, you know, passed on the ship or not. So many people had had something go wrong and some some part of their life completely shift as a result of this and it's showcasing you know in this one story the the strength of that and the strength of you know these people were these survivors were insane for being able to go through what they did and come out the other side and 
a society that just venerated them immediately. And especially Madeline being a public figure before the Titanic and just the explosion of what she had to deal with afterward. It's just, it's just wonderful. And it's, it's a wonderful historical figure to write a book about. It's, it's a story that definitely needed to be told. And I want to cry thinking about it because it is so good. I, it was one of those books where I immediately reread it after I read it the first time. Like I Mm -hmm. I just went straight back to the beginning to reread it and re-break my heart. (laughs) And I'm to the point where it's like, it's on my I, list for 2024. Like you, it's you've you've swayed me. <laughs> it's been on the list for 2024. It's just, it's just I'm amazing. Excited. Yeah, the the just she managed to capture every and just bottle every emotion and uh-huh. just shove it into the pages, and you like are forced to feel so strongly every every minute of that book. And it's just it's just not only to me, it it's just well written. She's just yeah. a very good author. She has great prose and she has great you know control of her scenes and she uses things very effectively. She knows how how to use uh like epistolary stuff and every chapter mm-hmm. starts with like a newspaper article, like almost extant where it's like you see you see the outside perspective and then you narrow into the character's perspective and it's just she's she's very intentional about how she she sets out her plots and how she showcases it to her readers and if you're an author it's just a just a great book to read to hone your craft and to to look at it and say okay this is what I could be doing better because it's Mm -hmm. it's should be held up as like one of one of the great historical novels and you know I was sitting there reading it and I was like if I could do this for the rest of my life if I could do what Shauna is doing I would be so happy like Mm -hmm. this is this is what book should be this is what art should be this is how people's story gets told is is like this so shauna i hate you and i love you you're amazing oh my god and that is that's my soapbox for the day i have another soapbox incoming but Marin, why don't you why don't you break up my very sad titanic thoughts this with a d- different take for or different direction <laughs> for sure but one of my ultimate favorites of the year that I had read pieces of before but never read the whole thing in its entirety and we have mentioned this particular <laughs> uh character in one of our Halloween episodes but uh Dracula by coming out Bram of left Stoker. field <laughs> coming out of left field I genuinely mean it when I say I adored this book mm-hmm. I loved it you know going into it reading a classic you know, I think it's I a was lot like, to ask of someone to read a classic. I think I was wondering, like, what will this, mm-hmm. you know, be like? Yeah. What, There's what so much take? canon about it and so much chatter about it before you ever read a classic that it's like you have to kind of like strip that away and go mm-hmm. into it. And it's really hard to hard to do that when you just know so much about it just by proxy. Yeah. And, but it was fabulous, phenomenal. <laughs> and you see so much when you're reading through this book of obviously the the origins of a lot of the vampire lore that we've come to know mm-hmm. today i love the characters mm-hmm. and just every little element was spooky yet lyrical mm-hmm. and historical at the same time it was just everything i want and far surpassed and was was just you know sometimes when you think of a classical book sometimes people don't think they're as entertaining well this yeah. entertained me till the cows came home <laughs> i adored it in every way this is a slight spoiler alert, so I'll we'll mark it's, it. It's, but it's been out for hundreds of years, hundreds since eighteen ninety seven. Yeah, so, it's... but at the end when they defeat Dracula, there's this line about even as Dracula is basically being killed for like the last time, you know, his final <laughs> defeat. There's still this look of hope in his eyes, even as he's dying. Mm-hmm. And let me tell Ugh. you, I. <laughs> cried not not mm-hmm. just for but like it's the same feeling i got watching the dracula miniseries on netflix at the end mm-hmm. there's something with the relationship with death mm-hmm. in this book uh, this bittersweet mm-hmm. this release of uh th- this this man this this <laughs> creature at this point leaving behind all he's known to to enter into eternity it just oh something about that type of story mm-hmm. that theme just always gets to me aside from like the cool spooky castle vampire vibes it just was so poignant for me and I was mm-hmm. like, damn like it's 
it's rare that I read a line nowadays where I really have to like mm-hmm. sit back and reread it and think about mm-hmm. what I've read and just sitting there feeling it. But this really just in every way, it's like, it's just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I could go it's on. It's a classic about, for a reason. Exactly. I could go on about the literary merits of it, but like summed up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all I, all I have to say. Well, would you like to share your next one with us? My next one is a little bit of a deja vu. It's another Shauna of Hay book because as soon as, as soon as I could not put myself through the second Mrs. Astor for a third time, as soon as, as soon as I said, I have to stop because I will, I will combust if I keep doing this to myself and I have to give it a rest for just a little bit. Um, I discovered she had another book out like just this year and I was like, well, well, now I'm ready to get hurt again. Um, this one is about Arabella Huntington, who was a boss bitch. What a what a wonderful woman! I love her so much. She was um, uh, the the mistress of railroad tycoon Collis Huntington in the Gilded Age, the best era, and um, she eventually became his wife and did so much. She she like it's so hard to sum up her life because she did so much stuff it's and that's what makes the book so good is you see so many different glimpses of her and so many different facets of this historical woman and if you don't know she uh opened the huntington museum huntington library in california so like if you've seen like the little boy in blue painting uh that's from there like they have recognizable pieces but you know her family and just her like they're they affected america in so many different ways that it's like just so cool to see the threads of that and see all the different like just things she accomplished as a woman in her time and how she girl bossed her way up into like one of the most powerful families in the Gilded Age. And like I think I did some billionaires. I mean so much money and just so much it's so fun to see like the excess it is like the gilded age show where you get to see the the excess and the the beautiful dresses and the interiors and it it does go a lot into like designing houses and like what you know the art that they would have picked out stuff like that where it's like if you like a good historical book like where it like delves into that kind of stuff it definitely has the vibes for sure but again it's just the idea of holding up a historical woman and being able to showcase her and all her, you know, faults and and glory and every every piece of her and being able to present her story in a way that is, you know, accurate and, you know, well researched but also like teaching you something and teaching you about a person you would never have learned about. I mean, welcome to welcome to history class with my male professor. I don't think he's ever going to even mention Arabella Huntington. So, you know, it's it's supplementary history that like is so important and especially if you're a woman like these people are like trailblazers and these people are you know it's it's I think it's very important to read about historical women and and people who actually lived because it is it's a class and like what it's it's empathy it's like you know this is this is you know my sister from another time and this is what she had to go through and it's it's just so interesting and it's so again well put together Shauna is just a a brilliant author and she just knows how to how not only how to pick a a good figure and manage their life and and boil down the important things they did into uh very small snippets and scenes but she also manages to do it very well and do it very prettily and you're always you know enraptured by her prose and her her writing and just you know the the beauty of her sentence structure in addition to being in awe of her subject so it's like if if I teach you nothing else, if you do nothing else I ever recommend on this podcast, <laughs> please, please pick up her books. I mean, like, they they quickly shot up my list to become two of the most important books I've ever read and two of my favorite books I've ever read. They That's are both, awesome. They're both a, a, a class in how to write, how to be a person, and how to deal with, you know, the things life throws at you and grief and and all of these things and how to how to rise above these horrible situations please pick up an american beauty or the second mrs astor they are fabulous fabulous books and you will not be sorry well the next book on my list continuing the vampire trend uh is salem salem's lot by stephen king 
of uh, this book. Oh, another left fielder. left fielder. I feel like my list is like consistently historical and yours is like like historical from such vastly different time periods. It's very it's like, different. Yeah, so very different vibes. Yes. So this book came out in 1975 and Did it honestly? Mhm. Wow. Yeah, it takes I, place that's older than I thought. I'll have to double check when when this takes place, but it, I think it's like the same time period. But uh it's basically like a vampire book and <laughs> what more I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything but a uh, kind of a vampiric type a uh, disease takes over the town from who they think this this one man in question is perhaps the the monster behind all the craziness going on and there's a lot of parallels to to Dracula but this book mm-hmm. There's a reason Stephen King is lauded as mm-hmm. being such an expert, and this really showed that it scared me. I was having vampire nightmares, <laughs> <laughs> which was that, you know, I woke up like, oh my gosh. But it's just so well done, and it's been a long time since I read a book that just felt thought through, that was mm-hmm. so developed, that was mm-hmm. smart writing. Now, I will say the one caveat, there's a little bit of sexism in (laughs) some of the tones. A lot of the cast skews. We love the 70s. (laughs) A lot of it skews white male. um, A lot of the characters. um, Even some children that are in it, white boys. (laughs) So that's my one, like, caveat is no going into it, that there are some sexist uh, tones in there. (laughs) However, great suspense. Mm Mm-hmm chilling details that just are gonna keep you up at night quite literally Uh it's everything i expected from this Mm -hmm. book and adding to sort of the vampire canon and what we perceive about about this monster did it add to like how do they portray the vampires like is it like very traditional like so it's there's some traditional elements but also there's this feeling of like they're right under your nose Oh, I love, like, I leave, love like, books anyone, like that. Like, anyone could be a vampire. Not like... Like Among Us. Like it's like the, yeah, there's an like, imposter not and like it could Edward be anyone. Not like Edward Cullen vampire, but like, you know, Monster any, any town, anyone is susceptible to this and yeah. it could come from anywhere. The vampire in question mm-hmm. in Salem's Lot mm-hmm. has a very normal job and a seemingly very normal life. But then you figure mm-hmm. out where he's come from and how that he's been led to this me. place. Uh, I want to read it someone, now. But just a, uh, you know, someone working a job in mm-hmm. the town, like whatever, like everyone yeah. else. So that's Salem's Lot. Highly recommend that one. <laughs> I'm, that's on my list now. I'm excited for that because <laughs> I'm probably going to be freaked out and sleeping with the You lamp will on. probably be freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> I love, knowing... you couldn't see Marin's face, but the way she said it was like, you will be freaked yeah, out. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like I know I'm gonna I'm gonna have nightmares, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I'm I'm at the point in my life where like if I have a nightmare, what whatever. Yeah. You no. Know, <laughs> whatever. The vampire can get me at this point. <laughs> well, the next one on my list is a different title, so this is coming out of left field <laughs> too. Uh, it's a nonfiction book. It is called The Other Side of the Coin by Angela Kelly. It came out in 2019, and. Angela Kelly was the Queen of England's headdresser for many, many years. This obviously, yeah, this obviously (laughs) came out before uh, Queen Elizabeth's passing. But this book was such an interesting dive into the the behind-the-scenes of Buckingham Palace, what it takes to dress a royal, how intensely they pay attention Mm -hmm. to how often are things reworn, what colors are we choosing, what fabrics are we choosing. How they transport different outfits when mm-hmm. they go on tours. Just crazy fun. Sounds so interesting. It's so interesting. How they label things. It's amazing for any fashion girly, any I royal have to girly. Read it. I feel like I you would have love to it. Read it. It's so like so fun. How do you dress the most famous family in the world? Like how do you how do you make an image for a family? Because like half of their image is their clothes like you, mm-hmm. you would recognize the queen because of her neon suits you would recognize exactly. kate because of her like slim but like soft silhouettes like you mm-hmm. you know you know these people just based on their outfits and you can en- envision them just based yeah. on you know what they wear so it's like how do you how do you 
create the the whole spectacle of this you know royal family and how do you make how do you do it in a way that's classy and befitting of a royal family it's just it gets, such an interesting idea it gets idea. into all of that but what i loved most about this book was uh seeing these behind the scene moments of the queen and mm-hmm. who she was as a person and her humor mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all these little fun anecdotes that we've just never Mm-hmm. heard before and the jokes that she angela kelly and the queen would play on each other and all these things that mm-hmm. no one has ever told before but angela kelly just beautifully done the yeah. the attention to to detail and the discretion of everyone and maintaining queen elizabeth both as a figure in the world mm-hmm. but also treating her like a person yeah it's it's such a it's such a hard job like I wouldn't even know where to begin. And it's like these, all of these people and all of these people have to work like clockwork. Mm-hmm. It's, this is Buckingham it's Palace. All down and to you, have to, you have to know exactly what you're doing at all times. Yes. And it's like the idea of that and like the systems they have in place and like they the stuff we place. as the public are not privy to. We just see the final product. It's like, it's such a, it's such a cool idea to present as like the thesis of a book and then like getting to peel back all of those yeah. layers and seeing like, how just how do they do it my last favorite title of the year (laughs) again (laughs) again. out of left field out of left field (laughs) with the steel Um, chair from the top rope (laughs) this also came out in 2023 it is her adult fantasy debut and that is sword catcher by cassandra clare and her non-fantasy debut yeah well which or non-shadow hunter debut Non Shadow Hunter. It is yeah. for sure fantasy. My brain is George. I... I've been incoherent all day. <laughs> it's 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 a problem. You know what? We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. It's okay. We're fine. It's but... the end of the year. We'll, we'll we'll be fine next year, right? This book is everything I've wanted from a fantasy for a long time. Mm-hmm. The care and attention that she took, and having sensitivity readers and having mm-hmm. linguists help develop this world. It's so vast. There's so much more even to be explored in future books. I was reading this and again, wanting to constantly come back to the world. And this is one of those books you read where you're thinking to yourself, Mm -hmm. this is what fantasy should be. And, you Mm -hmm. know, as it is, as is the case with adult fantasy, you might open this up and there's a lot to take in. There's a lot of world building to take Mm -hmm. in. There's a lot of court dynamics to take in with the different families that kind of are in power in this world. And, influencing the royal family and the magic and how it works but she honestly did such a good job in explaining this Mm -hmm. and in weaving in these details along the way so that i really digested it well but i love the characters in this book i love the world not only the attention to like the magical details but also just castle life and <laughs> this royalty character being royals. a prince and his sword catcher who kind of is like his uh his body double who stands <laughs> in when things are Very going Star really Wars. bad yes like padme and her handmaidens it's so beautifully done and lynn caster who's one of the main characters she has a pov in the book she's one of my new favorite characters oh wow of all time very high praise Mary. i related to her so much and i think that's probably why like i related to her on a level that i related to nesta and Mm -hmm. silver flames Mm -hmm. and again it's not i know those are two like more popular authors but it's not every Mm -hmm. day that i read a character that i identify so much with and that Mm -hmm. i feel so connected to and the fact that sandra was just able to depict all these different personalities and their flaws and their strengths and make you fall in love with them Highly recommend. I have not read all of her Shadow Hunter books. I only read mm-hmm. like four of them. Oh gosh, back in high school, so I didn't <laughs> quite know what I was going to be getting into. But this hit the spot at the age I am now and what mm-hmm. I'm wanting from a book. George R. R. Martin blurbed it and did an yeah, event with her. So like, yeah, so it's, that it's can good. put into perspective for you what's what's going on, what the vibes are. But I adore this. If you want mm-hmm. a good high fantasy. That's got the gate open for more books. Go for Mm -hmm. it. This really was the year for characters, like you said. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like all of our books and all of our, like, we have, like, some character to identify with or some character to not identify with but enjoy, like, is specifically tailored to us. Yeah. There's just just so many good, like, even, like, 
the historic, like, I remember second Mrs. Astor, there was a quote, like, youth does not mean I can't, like, stand by my decisions or, like, something like that. I can't abide by my decisions. And I was, like, crying. Like, I was, like, I love these characters so much and they're real people and I can't believe this is happening to me. Like, it's just, like, very good, very poignant POV characters this year. Like, Mm -hmm. what's going on? Did these authors have a meeting we didn't know about? Like, I know. just found some really good, like character driven books this year and I really yeah. enjoy that. And me too. Now Swordcatcher is on my list. Wow. I mean, I would never have expected it because she's so deep into Shadow Hunters, but that makes me very excited for what's to And come. I hope I hope that Swordcatcher and the the subsequent books mm-hmm. I hope that they get enough attention. Yeah. I hope that Shadow I've seen Hunters... them in every store. I've seen them in like the Kroger. <laughs> like I've yeah. seen them everywhere. I hope so. that the Shadow Hunter world like I hope this this book and the next ones have their own space and time to shine because yeah. I feel like after they Chain deserve of Thrones, it. I hope it eclipses it because <laughs> that was my worst book of the year. Oh <laughs> just, no! Just throwing one in. Chain no. of Thrones was my worst book of the year. So I I will read Sir Casher very much, hoping that it redeems <laughs> redeems Cassie Clare for me at least for now. But I yeah no I'm I'm literally probably gonna go pick it up after we record this nice like i i actually am just hearing you talk about it and i'm excited for Mm -hmm. i'm excited for a fantasy that's complicated again because like i feel like we're getting away from the fantasies that ask a lot of you and give a lot in return Mm -hmm. and we need more of that so yeah i'm i'm excited for for a fun fantasy book for once yes (laughs) and not a romanticy uh, a fantasy like where the plot yeah. and the world building is first. So let us know what your favorite <laughs> reads were for the year. If you read any yes, of the please. books that I'm we mentioned. I'm so curious as to, to what other yeah. people have been let reading. Let us know what you're planning to read for 2024. We are always here for more recommendations. So yeah, just let us know. And remember to rate and review on the platform of your choice. Happy New Year. Happy we're going New into Year. Here we go. 20, God help year. us. I cannot believe it. Yeah. God <laughs> save us all. Well, I, I guess feel like, yeah. I feel like we should be playing um near my god to thee as the ship is going down. <laughs> that's what's happening right now yeah, in that's my brain. <laughs> well, I guess on that note, we will see you all next year. Year ah. crazy. We're coming in next week with a banger episode. With a banger. We're so, gonna start the year off on a awesome note. A high note. High note. We started the podcast with a whole discussion on resand, and we're starting the year with another discussion on something controversial we are that's controversial all we'll, yeah that's brave. all we'll say <laughs> so you you will see us you'll next see us year next year a hot take but thank you so much for an amazing year and being such valued and loyal listeners we yes. love every single one of you every single ever one of you done any of our episodes and we love doing this and we can't wait to go into an even stronger year next year yay all right yay. well we'll see you We'll see you next year. Have a happy holiday. Stay safe and happy new year. Bye. Bye.